Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Frederick Health Hospital. Today we're going to be talking about a case of catheter-induced dissection of the left main. We'll go over techniques to get back into the true lumen and things to consider uh, when stenting a dissected vessel. The patient is a 50-year-old man with diabetes and a family history of premature uh, CAD. He has been having a typical uh, non-exertional chest discomfort and underwent a nuclear stress test uh, which showed anterior ischemia. His echo uh, was normal. So on cath, uh, his coronary arteries actually turned out to be quite difficult uh, to engage uh, due to uh, subclavian uh, tortuosity. Uh, the RCA turned out to be endographically normal. Uh, the left main um, could not be engaged with either a, a GL35 or a Tiger catheter, uh, so an EBU 3.0 catheter was used. Um, you'll notice how the uh, EBU catheter is a little bit roofed, uh, angled up and uh, digging into the wall of the left main. Uh, but uh, andrographically, uh, the left coronary system uh, looked uh, fairly normal uh, as well. And uh, here is the spider view. This is uh, not good. So uh, what we see uh, is a dissection uh, at the ostium of the left main, uh, probably from trauma uh, due to the catheter tip. Uh, we see a couple of classic features of uh, coronary dissection. Uh, first, uh, there is a new enlarged uh, vessel segment, uh, which is due to the formation of a false lumen and blood uh, filling into the false lumen. And second, uh, we see contrast staining, uh, which is due to contrast hanging out and swirling uh, in that uh, false lumen. So uh, when you find yourself uh, with a, a catheter-induced coronary dissection, uh, there are a few important things to keep in mind uh, so that uh, you don't make the problem worse. Uh, first, uh, stop injecting. Uh, continuing to inject uh, could continue to enlarge the false lumen and make it that much harder uh, to get a wire uh, back into the true lumen. Uh, second, uh, disengage the catheter. Uh, this is to limit any further trauma uh, from the catheter tip. Uh, if you need to get more shots, uh, get non-selective shots, unless you have the vessel wired and under control. Third, um, after uh, you've uh, composed yourself, uh, gently re-engage the vessel and try to get a wire down. Uh, for osteodissections, uh, I do suggest changing to a guide of a different shape if, if possible uh, to minimize any repeat trauma. A less forceful guide that is easily disengaged is ideal. So for the left main, uh, go for a JL guide instead of an EBU. And for an RCA, uh, use a JR guide and stay away uh, from an AL. So uh, in this case, uh, the uh, radial EBU 3.0 was uh, removed. And uh, because it was so difficult to engage the left main from the radial approach, uh, that left main was then gently uh, re-engaged with a uh, JL guide, uh, but from a femoral approach. Um, a BMW wire uh, was then quickly passed uh, to get control of the left main. And until there was wire access to the left main, um, non-selective injections were used uh, to reduce the possibility of uh, further enlarging uh, the false lumen. Uh, the patient was not doing well. Uh, on the MAC lab, um, he had marked uh, anterior ST elevations and uh, he was squirming on the table uh, with chest pain. Um, the uh, BMW wire uh, appeared uh, to be in a ramus or a branch of the LED and actually could not be easily uh, navigated down the LED. In fact, a little hard to see on these non-selective shots, uh, but the LED appears to have completely shut down uh, presumably due to compression from the blood and propagating intramural hematoma in the false lumen. Once a wire was uh, down across the left main and in the ramus dough, uh, a more uh, selective shot was taken. Uh, you can see here that the left main is clearly compressed uh, with the false lumen pressing down into the true lumen. The LED is uh, subtotally occluded, again from compression uh, from the propagating intramural hematoma. Uh, but fortunately, a probe order wire passed uh, relatively easily into what was thought to be uh, the true lumen. Uh, sometimes it can actually be quite difficult to tell uh, whether your wire is in the true or false lumen, but there are some clues. Uh, if the wire advances easily uh, without knuckling and without appearing to uh, spiral around the vessel, uh, then uh, you're probably in the true lumen. 
If your wire easily selects side branches, you're also probably in the true lumen. But remember, uh, you can also dissect down side branches. So just because you're going down side branches, uh, it's not a slam dunk. Uh, the wire needs to advance freely and easily uh, down those branches. Uh, if the patient is stable, uh, there are a few other options uh, as well. Um, if there are pre-existing collaterals, which unfortunately is usually not the case for iatrogenic dissections, uh, you can get contralateral access and do uh, contralateral injections uh, to help you. Alternatively, you can also use IVIS, uh, but the IVIS catheter uh, can itself uh, enlarge uh, the dissection plane. Uh, now, many of us do a distal microcatheter contrast injection. Uh, this is actually fairly risky uh, because if it turns out uh, you are in the false lumen, well, then your injection has just dramatically uh, enlarged the false lumen, uh, making uh, reability to enter the true lumen uh, that much more difficult. But what if, try as you might, uh, you're simply not able to get your wire into the true lumen? Well, uh, the most common reason for this is compression of the true lumen by the false lumen. As blood and uh, injected contrast enters the false lumen, uh, it gets larger and larger, compressing the true lumen and making it extremely difficult to wire. Uh, the uh, subsequent formation of a hematoma uh, in the false lumen uh, doesn't make things any easier. Um, there are a few techniques to deal with this, uh, but the uh, fastest and most easily accessible technique in an emergency uh, is a uh, parallel, is what's called the parallel wire and straw technique. So in this technique, um, if you find yourself uh, with a wire that's in the false lumen, uh, just leave it there. Second, um, advance a microcatheter over this wire uh, into the false lumen. And once the microcatheter is in the false lumen, aspirate back with a syringe. The idea here is to use the microcatheter as a straw uh, to evacuate the blood and intramural hematoma from the false lumen. Uh, once the blood and hematoma is evacuated, the false lumen will shrink and uh, collapse on itself, opening the true lumen back up. So this is the straw part of the technique. Uh, in CTOPCI, the straw technique is commonly used uh, to assist true lumen reentry in uh, anti-grade dissection reentry cases. And finally, pass your second wire, uh, the parallel wire, into the true lumen while keeping negative suction on your microcatheter straw uh, that's in the false lumen. You might need a second hand, uh, set of hands for this. Now, um, here's a tip. Um, it's more useful if the dissection is not at the ostium. Um, I suggest using an over-the-wire balloon to pass your second wire. And this is because with constant inflow of blood, uh, negative suction on the microcatheter straw may not be sufficient to keep the false lumen down. And so to mitigate this, uh, you can inflate your over-the-wire balloon proximal to the dissection and occlude the vessel. Um, this prevents further blood inflow into the false lumen and maximizes the ability of your microcatheter straw to keep the false lumen down. The uh, drawback, obviously, is that uh, unless you have collaterals and contralateral injections, uh, you will not be able to see uh, where your second wire is going very well. Now, if the uh, parallel wire and straw technique uh, don't work, uh, there are CTO techniques that can be useful. Um, there are quite a few uh, excellent references and, and, and YouTube videos uh, that describe these uh, techniques in great detail. Um, first, you can try STAR, uh, which is simply to uh, forcefully advance your wire in the false lumen until it pops back into the true lumen, usually at a bifurcation. Uh, this obviously has the risk of dissecting very far down the vessel. Uh, you can try uh, the uh, stingray balloon with a uh, double blind stick and swap to get back into the true lumen. Uh, this is usually done in combination with the uh, straw technique. You can also try to go retrograde and do reverse cart. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, if you're at a community hospital, uh, you might be stuck. Uh, stingray balloons are usually not available at community hospitals and retrograde interventions uh, are not recommended at hospitals without cardiac surgical backup. All right, so uh, with the pro order uh, down uh, in the LED, uh, the LED was uh, gently dilated with a 2.0 millimeter balloon uh, to reestablish flow. Uh, a small balloon was intentionally used here uh, to avoid squishing the intramural hematoma further down uh, the vessel. A long 3.5 by 38 millimeter DES was then deployed uh, from the ostium of the left main into the LED, and that intentionally jailed uh, the circumflex. And uh, here is where we are after stent placement. Um, there was better flow down the LED. Uh, the patient's chest pain is now better and his STs are improving. Um, there is still a contrast entering the false lumen in the left main. 
Uh, so the, the section flap has not been fully tacked up yet, and uh, some post dilation is going to be needed. But uh, looking at this more carefully, uh, your heart just sinks into your stomach. It does look like the guide wire is actually not in the LED, uh, but in a large diagonal. This case just keeps getting better. Uh, the stent just jailed the LED. All right, but to uh, better tack up the dissection flap, um, the osteo left main was uh, post dilated with a 4.5 millimeter NC balloon. And of course, there's Murphy's Law. Uh, as that balloon was being withdrawn, uh, it dragged the guide wire along with it, and guide engagement was lost. Uh, the left main had to be re-engaged, uh, but now that the vessel was stented, an EBU guide was used uh, for better support. So um, andrographically, uh, the left main uh, appears uh, much improved. Uh, the LED uh, was uh, rewired through the left main LED diagonal stent cell, uh, but the LED does seem uh, a little bit uh, pinched. And uh, looking at it from the spider view, indeed the LED is pinched off. It looks like there is thrombus or propagated intramural hematoma or a little of both uh, in the mid LED. Uh, another stent was uh, gonna be needed. So uh, after dilating the uh, stent cell with a 2.0 millimeter balloon, an overlapping 3.0 by 18 millimeter DES was deployed in the LED, uh, now uh, gelling the uh, diagonal. And uh, here is the angiographic result after LED stent deployment. Uh, it looked fairly good. And um, unlike our usual practice, uh, no more post dilation was actually done here uh, to avoid propagating any residual intramural hematoma any further down the LED or uh, diagonal. So um, a, a few words of advice uh, about stenting dissected vessels. Um, stenting dissected vessels is precarious and is not the same as stenting non-dissected vessels. Um, there is a high rate of both early and late complications. Uh, ballooning and stenting can cause extension of the hematoma and propagate the false lumen down the vessel. And appropriately sizing the stent uh, is difficult uh, because of the intramural hematoma. So in many cases, initially well-opposed stents can become mal-opposed later on as the uh, hematoma uh, resorbs. So a few pointers on PCI of a uh, dissected vessel. Predilation should be minimized. If you need to do it, uh, use a small balloon and keep it at low pressure. You don't want your predilation balloon to squish out the intramural hematoma and propagate the false lumen further down the vessel. And similarly, uh, don't oversize the stent. A large stent will also squish out the hematoma and extend the dissection. Dissective vessels can be hard to assess, and so um, consider using IVIS uh, to help uh, with stent sizing. Size the stent as best you can to the size of the vessel. This is one of the few situations where uh, I would actually suggest erring on the side of a smaller stent. Uh, next, uh, choose longer stents, uh, far longer than, than you would uh, for normal PCI, and significantly longer uh, than the dissected segment. Uh, you want the end of your stent to be in healthy tissue well beyond the end of the dissection. Why? Well, uh, this will help with pinning in the false lumen and prevent it from propagating. In fact, consider placing short stents uh, preemptively in normal segments, uh, proximal and distal to the dissection, uh, before you start uh, stenting the dissected segment. Uh, these uh, preemptive stents uh, can then act as barriers uh, to block a hematoma propagation uh, while you're working on the dissected segment. And finally, as with uh, predilation, uh, post dilation in the dissected segment uh, should be uh, minimized, and if done, uh, kept at a low pressure. And remember, your aim in these cases is not angiographic perfection. Uh, it is uh, simply uh, to restore flow in your otherwise unstable patient. Uh, perfect is the enemy of good, especially uh, in PCI of uh, dissected vessels. All right, so uh, here is the uh, final angiographic result, uh, which is uh, quite satisfactory uh, considering how the uh, case went. Uh, troponin peaked at 3.8, and uh, fortunately, uh, EF uh, remained normal uh, with uh, no wall motion abnormalities. Uh, the patient uh, did fine and went home a couple of days later on a course of a prolonged uh, dual antiplatelet therapy. All right, uh, take home messages. Uh, first and foremost, uh, be very meticulous about your catheter engagement, especially with guides uh, which are stiffer. 
avoid roofing the tip of the catheter into the vessel wall. Yes, sometimes this is unavoidable. Uh, but if you do notice uh, that your pressure tracing is damped, uh, do not inject. Uh, if you do end up with a catheter-induced dissection, uh, the first thing you do uh, is to stop any more contrast injections. Uh, you don't want your contrast injections to, uh, to extend uh, the false lumen. Uh, disengage the catheter and take non-selective shots. Uh, wiring dissected vessels is extremely challenging. Uh, for osteodissections, uh, we discussed uh, using less forceful guides, such as a JL for the left and a JL for the right, uh, to avoid uh, further uh, catheter trauma. Uh, we discussed the uh, parallel wiring and the straw technique, and as well as outlined some CTO techniques, uh, which uh, may help. And remember that stenting dissected vessels is not the same as stenting normal vessels. Now, you need to be less aggressive with your predilation and postdilation so that you don't squish out uh, the intramural hematoma. Consider pinning in the dissection with stents, proximal and distal, uh, in the uh, healthy tissue. And you'll need to use much longer stents than usual. And remember not to oversize. Thank you for watching.